how to be one with god moment to moment this is in response to a question i feel in my heart one desire to be one with god what is the way first of all we have to understand god is not a person that you can be living with but you remember you have not learned to live with your spouse with your husband with your wife with your friend always there have been conflict how can then you imagine to be one with god moment to moment so then that possibility does not exist you have to develop certain qualities in you that you can live moment to moment in that consciousness which is total which is oneness of harmony and bliss every moment when we are interacting living in the world there is conflict with this one and that one with that approach with that understanding you cannot imagine to be in harmony with god what is the best way when i look around one thing is this attain to enlightenment and everything is possible but that's a long journey what is the practical way what is the quality of a such a being who can be in harmony with god from moment to moment has been explained by 3rd century bc mystic adi shankar the father of indian mysticism yoga there are many compositions of adi shankar i can overlook these but one bhaj govindam i cannot overlook the other is nirvan shatkam a composition of six stanzas of four lines each i cannot overlook it explains the quality of a being that can remain moment to moment in communion with god so when you listen to this you can try to inculcate slowly and slowly one by one a few qualities the moment you develop a few qualities in you your life begins to change then it becomes a pattern and you cannot avoid even if you wish to avoid the composition of bhaj govindam shankar was going along with his disciples 14 or 15 through the lanes of varanasi narrow lanes there he sees an old man haggard with no teeth in his mouth the stomach and the back is becoming one but he was trying to remember the famous grammar of kashmiri pandit panini seeing him in that state ready to enter the grave chanting trying to remember the rules of grammar what does grammar means you are concerned with grammar only if you have to go into writing for writing grammar is very important there are certain relaxations when you are speaking although grammar is still very important in that it is the backbone he said you are approaching the hour of death every moment we are moving towards the hour of death and you are trying to remember the rules of grammar then he says seek govind seek that which is and that is known as bhaj govindam but this composition that i am talking about composition of six stanzas four line each nirvan means salvation or enlightenment 
also it is known as atma atma means soul the being when you attain to salvation you attain to enlightenment you dwell in the realm of being soul which is neither this nor that so he has to negate that which is is neither this nor that he goes a step by step he lived in a state which is southernmost state of india kerala and india is a large geographical area from kerala to himalayan mountain in certain parts the plane does not fly even because nobody wants to go to those places the mountain climbing is the only way walking on the feet he was 8 years of age 3rd century bc no means of transportation he did not have the modern day jackets and clothes very scanty clothes walking bare feet with a stick in his hand and the scene says that he is found wandering in the himalayan mountains amid the snow bone piercing coldness and why he was there it is said that when you are looking for the master you have to go to the himalayan mountains that's why in the last moments lausi said there is no better place to die than himalayan mountains so says jesus and moses so he was going and he lausi was going to cross over the check posts when he reached the last check post there was a guard named kwan hi hu shi this she is not the pronoun as an english language it is chinese language so it was a security guard me he he was a follower of lausi he had loved lausi he said i will not allow you to leave this place until you write something about tao lausi said that which is cannot be nothing can be said nothing can be written but kwan hi she said you have to write something before i can allow you to leave this check post and go on to your errand to reach the himalayan mountains so the credit goes to kwan hi she who made lausi compose tao te ching one of the most beautiful composition the only composition of lausi so shankar was found wandering in the himalayan mountains in search of the master there he met a man called govind pad acharya he asked him who are you 8 years of age imagine intellect has not been developed properly but what is his state of awareness he composed his six stanzas and i will sing those stanzas and then explain the meaning which is very important mano buddhi ankar chittani naham mano buddhi ankar chittani naham na ca shrotra jivve न च घ्राण नेत्रे न च श्रोत्र जिवे न च घ्राण नेत्रे न च व्योम भूमि न तेजो न वायु न च व्योम भूमि न तेजो न वायु चिदानंद रूप शिवो शिवो चिदानंद रूप शिवो शिवो मनु बुद्ध अहंकार चित्ता नाम माइंड एज फोर कॉर्नर्स मन 
माइंड बुद्धि इंटेलेक्ट अहंकार ईगो सेंस चित स्टोर हाउस ऑफ द मेमोरी ही सेज नीदर एम आई द माइंड नॉर द इंटेलिजेंस नॉर ईगो नॉर द स्टोर हाउस ऑफ द मेमोरी फर्स्ट ही निगेट्स ऑल दैट एंड वट यू आर ईगो You can stop talking to someone because he had said something that you did not learn. The memories keep on surfacing again and again when you meet your spouse or the person with whom you have severed the relation. You cannot forget, and then your own intelligence that you consider as supreme. So he said, neither am I mind, nor intelligence, nor ego sense, nor the storehouse of the memory. First aspect. Then comes. This is where the first aspect comes. When the light comes, it is coming, just as electricity comes from the national grid. It is already outside there. Then your house is wired. it reaches to the place which is known as the meter or junction box from there it is distributed in the entire house so it is reached to the mind first then it is divided into intelligence ego the storehouse of the memory from there it descends then it goes through the various channels then he says nacha shrut rujuvi nacha ghran netri he is talking about the organs of perception now organs of perception through which the information comes into us you are listening to me through the art of listening act of listening the message is reaching you through the the door of eyes you see something through the tongue you taste something he says neither am i the organ of hearing nor that of tasting nor that of smelling nor seeing these are the physical eyes what we see sometimes is not truth it may be a half truth what you hear may not be true unless you are free of that because whatsoever you put in a container which is dirty gets dirty it acquires the flavor the taste the color of the container where it is put your mind is the container is the pot if the pot is not clean whatsoever you put in that will certainly get dirty so he talks about this sense organs organs of perception that i am neither the organ of hearing nacha shrutra nacha ghran netre netre means eyes neither am i the eyes nor hearing nor that of tasting nor is smelling nor seeing then human body is made out of elements the earth water fire ether air so he says nacha vyom bhumir na tejo na vayu i am neither the sky nor the earth nor fire nor air my body is composed of that but i am in the body but i am not the body when you are not the body how can you be composed of these elements the earth the sky the water the fire then he answers in the last line who are you i am blissful consciousness eternal formless that is never born and never dies and birth something enters the body is formed with the interaction of ovum and sperm but that which enters the body has nothing to do with your parents the father or the mother or the process of the biology that is beyond everything then he says i am ever pure blissful consciousness i am eternal formless and born shiva shiva does not mean the hindu deity hindu god with the serpent 
around his neck and others the emblems. Shiva refers to that which is eternal, that which is formless, that which is unborn, that is never born, never dies. Then in the second stanza he continues. Nacha pran sangyu navai panchu vayu Nacha pran sangyu navai panchu vayu Nava sapta dhatur nava panchu kosha Nava sapta dhatur nava panchu kosha now the body is formed this is art of creation, is formed of the my the outside from the national grid, the electricity has entered your house in the form of the meter, in the form of main junction box. From there it is to be distributed through various channels throughout the body. Then it is starts distributing through now the body is formed, something is needed for the sustenance of the body. The first and the foremost thing that is needed for the sustenance of the body is the, the air, the life force, the breath that comes in with that every moment you are connected to the electricity grid the outside you. That is known as the life center that lies outside you and the one center that is within you. There has to be a connectivity between the two. Just as through the umbilical cord you were connected to the mother's womb and you continue to get the sustenance, the food. In the same way, when you are connected through the life force or the air that comes into you, the pranvayu, the alanvayu, the orgon, through that you are connected. Their connection, the bridge is established between the inner center and the center outside. So he says, neither am I the vital breath, nor five vital airs. There are five types of airs according to Vedanta, the Hindu system, the, which will be explained sometimes later on that do not fall within the framework of the present explanation. I am neither the vital breath nor the five airs. Nava panch, nava sapta dhatur, the seven metal. You know, according to organic chemistry, there are three most important elements. The carbon, the nitrogen and the hydrogen. Nitrogen forms the largest part of the Earth's atmosphere. It preserves. Hydrogen is explosive and carbon is another aspect of it. So these th everything that you see around is composed of that. Even oxygen is a derivative of carbon. Everything that you see is a derivative of carbon with different permutation and combinations. So he says, I am neither the seven ingredients of which the body is composed of, nor five sheets, the realms of which the body is composed of. I am neither of these. Anytime when I explain on the aspects according to Vedanta or Yoga, then I will explain the seven ingredients the sheets and so on and so forth. Then in the first sentence he spoke about the organs of perception. Now he speaks about the organs of action. You have heard something. Now you have to respond. You hear through the 
ears, but you speak through the vocal cord. Organs of percept, the action. So five organs of action, five organs of perception. Each one of them. So he said, neither I am the organ of speech, nor that of holding. Something that you experience through the skin, you respond through the hand. Then the movement, which is feet, and the organs of excretion. I am neither of these. But sometimes we are identified with this. We consider our word to be most sublime. And neither am I the organ of his speech, nor that of holding hands, nor that of movement, feet, nor that of excretion. What am I then? Ever blissful, unborn, unmanifest, eternal consciousness that is bliss. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. The ever pure blissful consciousness. Third stanza he continues. Name rag dueshu name lobu muhu. Name rag dueshu name lobu muhu. Madu naiv me naiv matsaribhava. Madu naiv me naiv matsaribhava. न धर्मो न चार्थो न कामो न मोक्षः न धर्मो न चार्थो न कामो न मोक्षः चिदानंद रूपः शिवोहम शिवोहम चिदानंद रूपः शिवोहम शिवोहम what are you? Embodiment of hatred, embodiment of attachment, embodiment of greed, embodiment of infatuation. If someone has said something that did not like you, you hate that person. And that becomes your insignia, I hate him, I don't like him, so on and so forth. So in the first Name Rag Doeshu, I am neither the hatred, not attachment. Doesh means hatred. Rag means attachment. Love means greed. Mo means attachment. I am neither of these hatred, attachment, greed or infatuation. Madho naivu me naivu matsarve bhava. Then what comes? Now imagine what you are. Neither do I have pride, nor feeling, nor envy, nor jealousy. But these are the qualities without which there can be no man. You must be envious, you must have feelings, you must have been jealousy. Then you live in your cave, live in your own prison cells. If you want to come out of the prison cell, you have to realize what binds you. The pride, the feeling, the envy, the jealousy. He says, I am neither of these. Mano naivu me naivu matsarve bhava. Then comes, we are divided. Na dharmo na chartho na kamo na moksha. I am neither bound by dharma, which is righteousness. I am not talking about the religion as you know. Religion, what is the essential religion? Righteousness. We are divided into righteousness or unrighteousness. This is right, this is wrong. And you have your own definitions. Every religion has its own definition of good and bad, right and wrong. He says, I am not bound by dharma, righteousness, nor earth. Earth means wealth, the prosperity. Nor karma. Karma means desire, the lust. Then moksha, the desire for liberation. I am not bound by these. The liberation is one of the last aspect that an individual has to attain. Earth, dharma, kama and moksha. These are the four attributes or purusharths that 
an individual has to attain in his lifetime, the liberation from these. He said, I am neither of these. Na dharmo, na chartho, na kamo, na moksha. Then who are you? Chidananda Rupa, Shivo Ham Shivo Ham. I am ever pure, blissful consciousness, unborn, unmanifest. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. Ever pure, blissful consciousness. Ever pure, blissful consciousness comes before this stanza. Na punyam, na papam, na saukyam, na dukyam. Na punyam, na papam, na saukyam, na dukyam. Na mantra, na tirtha, na vida, na yagya. Na mantra, na tirtha, na vida, na yagya. Aham bhojanam naiva bhojyam na bhokta. Aham bhojanam naiva bhojyam na bhokta. Chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham. Chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham. Na punyam na papa. The entire humanity, the mind, everything is divided into pair of opposites. Pair of opposites, either you are bound by merit or sin. All the actions, all, everything is divided between sin, merits and virtue. He is a virtuous man, he is a sin. Punyam na papam, neither I am the virtue nor the sin. Na saukyam na dukyam. Neither I am I bound by the worldly joy, nor by the sorrow. Neither bound by the worldly joys, nor by sorrows. You go to see a movie. Why the movie is created? There is a story writer. The director, the financer decides that I want to make a movie on this particular theme. So he approaches the story writer to create a story. And for the story now certain things have to be incorporated. There has to be actors. The main lead actor, the hero, the heroine, the villain, the father and all other repertoire in order to complete this story. Then if the wife, your, the stage wife dies, are you going to lament over that? Or if your stage son dies, in that script of three hours dies, would you lament over it? You know in reality, my son or wife or husband has not died. This is the acting that I am doing. The Hindus say the life is a Leela. Leela means the play, the acting, the world is final stage on which we come to act our parts. Then do the most of what you may, because frigid claws of death may soon descend and seal your humble fate. So this, this is the episode. Those who watch the soap operas, in the soap opera, if there is a theme on a particular day, it may continue, continue for a few episodes. The same theme comes, then the characters change somewhat. Because the soap opera is to continue for a certain number of episodes, maybe 100, 200, or maybe if it is very popular, it may continue for years on the television screen. And these are very popular with everyone. Those who see, then they discuss on phone among themselves about the scene, about the acting and all that. But we forget. The, all these are for entertainment. So Hindus say the life is for entertainment. In this life, I have known you. I have known you through your face. When you speak, I can recognize that it is you who is speaking. The moment I become silent and I am not in front of you, can you recognize me? Those who have not seen me, how can they recognize? Many times it happens because of my 
being in the public figure, being in, uh, on the radio programs and so on, people hear me. They recognize the voice. Many times, people, when I speak, they recognize me. Just recently, I had been in one of the supermarkets. In the bakery, I asked the person that you have the coconut bake in Trinidad. We make the bread, a big one, and like a burger size with coconut pieces into it. So I asked the person, so he said it's there. So I pick up one and I ask to confirm is this coconut bake? The lady responded in a loud voice, yes sir. So I took that and I started walking through the aisles. I realized that I walk slow because of my feet problem. So I realized that there is someone who is coming behind me and trying to overtake. So I just sighted. There was a lady and she looked at me and said that woman was very harsh. She should have been soft in speaking to you. I said it does not matter to me because I needed the answer. And everyone has to respond in their own voice, in their own intonation, in their own style. And it does not affect me, it does not help me in any way. In any way. She said, stop a minute. Are you Tausho Buddha? I said, yes. He said, only that man can speak like that. I said, have you written, met him? He said, no. So that person had not met me, so he could, she could not recognize, but she has heard my words. So it happens, my and your connection is only through the, these sense organs, through these things. And the moment I disappear, or you disappear, you will not be, and suppose if we meet in another episode, sometimes it happens, one actor has to perform one or two roles. So his attire is changed, he changes his intonation, dialogue delivery, everything changes and you find that he is sounding like a different man. So these are the part of the stage acting. So he says, I am neither bound by the sin or virtue, nor pain and pleasure, nothing that. So the pain and pleasure comes when you con consider this person. But in the stage, in the play, we do not consider this. We do not lament. We only lament on the stage. After that, we know neither the person died, nor the person is related to me. We are just friends, happen to be the co-actors on this stage. So in this, na punyam, na papam, na sokyam, na dukyam, neither am I bound by merits, nor sin, nor by worldly joys, nor by sorrows. Then it comes now, some people are bound by certain things, sacred hymns. They chant psalms, mantras, zikrs, and so on and so forth. They visit sacred places and that is their whole effort that they must as a Hindu they must visit the holy places you must chant the zikr every day if you are a, uh, following the Islamic tradition if you are a Hindu tradition you must follow your mantras every morning you should chant your mantra or uh, read your psalms she said, neither am I bound by sacred hymns, nor by sacred place, nor by sacred scriptures or sacrifices. People consider that doing the virtuous acts, giving donations, giving charities will take me to the company of God. When Bodhidharma reached China in 6th century AD, as the invitation of the king of the Wu dynasty, the normal tradition was he has opened many monasteries, Buddhist temples, he was feeding the children, the schools and all these charitable acts. He uh, inquired from Bodhidharma, I have been doing all these things 
will I be able to get a place in the heaven? He said, you will not get a place even in the seventh hell. This shocked the, uh, the king because this is what we have been taught. Do this, do that and you will be close to God. But those men of awareness, they know that nothing can happen that way. So neither I am bound by this. Then it comes, Aham bhojanam naiva bhojyam na bhokta. We live for taste. The uh, taste of different kinds. The tongue, the life of eat, drink and be merry. The whole effort is what to eat now, where to go and all that. So you want to live life, experience life through enjoyment, Either you are the object of enjoyment or you are the one who is experiencing the joy or you are the joy that you have experienced three things. The subject, the object, the predicate through which a sentence is completed. Either you are the subject, experience something or just as you are the one who is drinking tea. The tree, T is the object, you are the subject and that ha which happens between the object and subject is predicate or the verb. What are you doing? I am drinking tea. So these we are divided into either I am the subject or I am the object or I am the experience that happens between the two. So Shankar says I am neither the enjoyment, the experience, nor the experienced, nor the experience in the three stages. The subject, the object, the predicate. I am ever blissful consciousness, the unborn, the unmanifest. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. The pure blissful consciousness. Pure blissful consciousness. It comes to the fifth stanza. Namrityor na shanka na me jati veda. Namrityor na shanka na me jati veda. Pita naiv me naiv mata na janma. Pita naiv me naiv mata na janma. Na bandur na mitram gurur na eva shishyam. Na bandur na mitram gurur na eva mit shishyam. Chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham. Chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham. Namrityor na shanka na me jati bheda. Now, we are all afraid of death. The spiritual journey is how to prepare the last flowering, the last fruition. Namrityor na shanka. Shanka means fear, doubt, doubt about death. You consider that. Everyone will die, but not me. So there is doubt and there is fear. When you realize the death is approaching, there is fear. The trembling, the last moment when somebody is dying, he starts trembling. Out of fear, he closes his eyes. Namrityo na shanka na mejati bheda. Neither am I bound by death, nor its fear, nor by the rules of caste, creed, religion, distinction, whatsoever it is. The male, female, the rich and poor, the caste, the creed, the distinction of any kind. I am neither bound by any of these. Namrityor na shanka na mejati bheda. Pita naiva me, pita naiva me naiva mata na janma. Neither do I have father nor mother, or neither I was born nor I will nor will I die. 
because body is born through the interaction of father and mother because they have the mechanism the body is formed through ovum and sperm the interaction between the two so that which is born must die undergo changes from birth to death the childhood the youth the age and so on and so forth but are you the body are you the mind no the body is formed with the interaction of ovum and sperm what about the one that enters the body that gives the body the sustenance and the moment that this appears the body becomes lifeless your body does not deteriorate the moment you die it has to be cremated as quickly as possible otherwise it will start putrefying decay so what is that that sustains the process of decaying or destruction of the body that which enters the body that enters the body is not born and neither dies that is you can call it light you can call it awareness you can call it soul or whatsoever name you want to give but no name can encompass that which is remember that so he says neither am i pita naiv me naiv mata na janma neither i have father nor mother nor i am born nor dies these are my stage father or stage mother the stage show lasts for 3 hours during 3 hours this particular person you say is acting as the father of that man the hero or the girl the act, lead actor or the actress he may be younger than the lead actor or actress but he is acting the part but do you say anything like that for your father when the stage show continues for 50 years 40 years 30 years sometimes certain soap operas continue for a longer period of time depending on their popularity so i know at the back of my mind that this person is my stage father stage mother i am not born i simply manifested enter the body in order to continue my role just as the actor enters into the role a particular person maybe x enters into the role for 3 hours as a batman or a superman or a, any other role or the indian movie actors or the hollywood movie actors he is a person now he is entering into the role of that acting so he manifests into that form then comes na bandur na mitram gurur naiv me shishya i am i neither have the relationship nor friends neither i have a spiritual teacher nor disciple the master disciple is a game jidu krishna murti says i have no master and i have no disciple this is a dream because the just as when you enter this college your education system the person whose class you attend he knows something more than what you know so you go to learn from him the moment you have learned maybe you may excel than him maybe you can attain to greater heights great positions he may be the primary school teacher but you become a university lecturer you do finish your phd and you may win a, even a nobel prize a prominence this is simply a part it cannot be otherwise the relationship the friendship these are part of the stage acting the master disciple is an act so what happens we are divided into this is my master 
How can I accept somebody else as a master? These are narrowness. I am a Christian. Jesus is my master. How can the Hindu gods and goddesses can be my master? How can this man be my master? I already have a master. And then they lose the opportunity. In the education system, you do not say that this is my master in form one. You have studied under one particular teacher. And that too, in form one, there was a special teacher for physics, next one for chemistry, third one for mathematics, and so on and so forth. Each subject was taught by a different person. So you do not have a conflict about that. You do not say that I do not like this teacher. Or I cannot learn from him. I always have a teacher. The devotees of the Sai Baba, anytime you ask, try to tell them something, I already have a master. I don't need another one. These are the ignorance. You remember you have to learn from everything, sentient and insentient. And the moment, the art of learning, the art of going to the master is, the moment you go beyond the master, you have developed the capabilities to learn from every circumstance, situation, which even seems to be an odd situation. Someone insults you. What would you learn? Now, what did I learn from that person who asked me if I am that person? That I must continue in the same way. When I speak, people follow my words. People follow my words. So I must be careful in using my, opening my mouth. What should I speak? How should I speak? And whatsoever I speak, it should be, it should have the capability to transform the person. Now she will remember that. Why she did? Because this person has been speaking in a particular way, particular style, and it has a cumulative effect. Talk after talk. That's why some of you may feel that the life is transforming. It is how you respond. The, how the words are spoken and that is what is very important. I am no spiritual teacher nor the disciple. This is simply a game. The relationship, the friendship, the master-disciple relationship negates all that. Who are you? Again he comes to the last sentence. I am unborn, unmanifest, ever pure, blissful consciousness. Bliss is your very nature. Hindus use three words. Sat is the noun, means truth. Or in Islamic tradition, Haq, Sat. But Sat is a static. It is an experience. When you have experienced truth, what would you do? Your life, you will start translating into your actions. And that can happen through your thoughts. First the thought comes, then thought becomes action. So, chit, constant, this is dynamic, constantly changing. Moment to moment, your actions, your thoughts changes. You have decided to go somewhere. All of a sudden you have to change your strategies because on this particular route there is traffic. So this is consciousness constantly changing, dynamic, ever changeable. Then what is the outcome? When you have experienced truth, you are living by truth. Your thoughts, your actions is guided by the experience of truth, the oneness, the harmony the bliss, the joy, a something bliss, joy have the opposite sorrow, the bliss, the anand does not have opposite to it, it is something of the beyond, beyond all human imagination, beyond everything that man can imagine, 
And that is why these three words are given Satchitanam. Truth, consciousness and bliss. And this is what Shiva is. And he says, I am ever pure blissful consciousness. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. Ever pure blissful consciousness. Then the last sansa comes, which is the culmination. Now when all these things, you are neither the sense organs, nor the mind, nor the storehouse, nor this, nor that, then who are you? What is the nature of light? Light, does it have a form? The awareness, does it have a form? Thought is formless, but you give it a form. The architect, a thought comes to their mind. It is be dimensionless, beyond dimension. You encompass it within the dimension. You give that thought a dimension. A thought comes to a musician's mind. A particular tune hums, then he is going to give it a form. He encompasses it to a tune within the particular rhythm, particular aspect. He composes something. Okay, he gives a form. So your original form is formless. Aham nirvikalpo nirakar rupo. Aham nirvikalpo nirakar rupo. Vibhutvach sarvatra sarvindriyana. Vibhutvach Sarvatra Sarvindriyanam Nachasya Sangatam Naiva Muktirnamiya Nachasya Sangatam Naiva Muktirnamiya Chidananda Rupaha Shivoham Chivoham Aham nirvikalpo nirakar rupo Vivutvach sarvatra sarvindriyana Vivutvach sarvatra sarvindriyana Nachasya sangatam naiva Muktirnamiya Chidanand Rupa Shivoham Shivoham Now what happens if there is a form, if there is a thought? Thought can change, it can vary. Certainly it can vary, the thought. You can make a little modifications. You are working on a recipe, you can change its contents, you can vary it. So he says, I am without variation. That which is formless, how can you vary it? And I am without form. Aham nirvikal. That is why in Hinduism, according to Vedanta, they call it nirvikal samadhi. The state where there is no variations. The formless. Nirakar means formless. The ultimate state of everything is formless. Everything emerges from the formless, attains to form and dissolves into the formless. Aham nirvikalpo nirakaru rupo Without any variation and without any form. Vibhutta vach sarvatra sarvendriyanam I am present everywhere. As the underlying subtratum of everything, and behind all sense organs. Now how that is formed? God is, it is said, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. But in what form is he omnipresent, omniscient and omnipotent? I have heard one day, gold said that I am omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. How? Gold is the basic metal of which entire jewelry the entire world of jewelry is formed. The clay is, is the base, the subtratum of all the clay items. 
different forms, different shapes, different colors, different designs. So too, gold is the subtratum of or the essential element in metal, the metal of which all the jewelry is formed, whether the earrings, whatsoever form of jewelry do you have a liking for it is made out of gold. Gold is omnipresent, omniscient and omnipotent. It is capable of being transformed. Clay is, being is capable of being molded into any shape, any form. Gold is capable in the hands of it. Gold is split. It is capable of attaining to any form or any shape. So gold is capable of being transformed into any form, shape, color, creed or anything. It has its entire creation in the form of jewelry. The pottery is an art. There are so many unimaginable things made out of clay. Now you go on looking at a particular metal and see how many things are made out of that. If God is that element in the form of light, in the form of awareness, you see the people you interact, each one of have a different bent of mind, different thought contents, different thought process. Everything is so different. The one man, the, his thinking differs from that of other. This is diversity. This is the beauty. That you can see so many people with diverse, but everything. So what is very important? Every single piece of jewelry is beautiful. Isn't it? It appeals to someone. But it is the gold that is the basic element then you do not call it a gold, you call it a diamond necklace because diamonds are stood in such a way that enhances the beauty. Gold simply remains the supportive metal. It simply holds on to the precious metals, precious gems which form the basics. So the, what you see the precious gems, you see the shape, the necklace, you see the shape of the bangles and the diamonds or the rubies or pearls stood into it. You forget about gold. When someone of that nature speaks to you or you come across a person, you must realize, you must be reminded of your beloved. If you are in totally love with your spouse, your husband or wife, Everything will remind you of him or her the moment you see. That is the beauty. Everything that you see walking on the street, if I see the beauty or the intelligence of someone, it reminds me the, the infinite intelligence of my beloved God. It throws me into that company. It throws me into that company. That, I am, that he is ever present. The entire creation is nothing else but the expansion of the creative instincts of that. It is in the flower that he blossoms. It is in the, the roaring of the lion, the roaring of the ocean, the waves, the, the cry of a child, the laughter. In everything, his insignia, his signature is seen. There is a particular restaurant in Dubai that is known as Signature by Sanjeev Kapoor. If you are familiar with the art of uh, the culinary art of someone, you must know from the by looking at the dish that this is a particular creation of this person. Amidst you, there is a beautiful, versatile cook. Even if I just happened to see the pictures of the dishes that she has created. I know no one else can create this except that person. This connects me. When I look at those pictures, it immediately connects me to the creative instincts of my beloved. 
with whom I am in constant communion moment to moment through you, through I, through everything that I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, through every circumstance, through every situation, it transports me into that company. I am ever present in that form. I am omnipresent. I am the underlying substratum of everything behind all sense organs. Na chasya sangatam naiva muktir Neither do I attach to anything, nor do I get freed from everything. I am not attached to you, but I am not free from you. I am not attached to you because you are a grown-up person. And I am not free from you because it is my responsibility to manifest all that I am, to share all that I am in myriad forms. Maybe this talk will be heard by someone else in any part of the world nobody knows. I may not even know that there will be the people who will be listening to it. So that becomes my greater responsibility in that I am not free from anything. I am free and yet still I am not free. And what is that state beyond? I am ever blissful consciousness. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. Pure blissful consciousness. These are the six stands through which Shankar explains that what he is. Now, when someone says something like this, how can a master reach it? And Shankar's journey began. Now, these are the attributes of the one who can be in constant communion with that which is. How to attain to this? What is the methodology? You listen to this. Try to make your own notes. And then try to see one by one how can you incorporate these qualities in you. The simplest method is you can choose that every day at a particular time whatsoever happens, whatsoever circumstance and situation I encounter, I will be in harmony with it. No arguments, no judgment, nothing. Simply, I will be meditative in that moment and try to see the greater reason of divine will. You are flowing with that. You are in total acceptability with that. No argument, nothing. This is one way. Then you can choose that the first man or at a particular hour that you see that 10 o'clock whosoever I meet, I will look into him, the divine presence. I will be in harmony with it. Maybe he may be my ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend with whom I have no relationship I have severed. But I will be in harmony with that. So I am mentioning of the odd situations that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis and that upsets you. So you can choose one event, begin with one event, one person, continue every day with that and then in the evening you analyze whether you were in harmony with that, whether you try to analyze, whether you analyze, have you analyzed it in a creative way so that you can get connected to the Divine Presence or you went in the other direction, then it will happen that whenever any circumstance and situation comes, your outlook towards the life, towards that even changes. Whatsoever circumstance and situation that I am with, the moment I set my foot out to go 
or I decide to speak. The words have to flow in such a way that can create the grooves in the consciousness of those who listen to it. These words are simple. It is the energy field that flows behind those words, my intentions, my awareness, the understanding that forms the energy field. You may smile with the person with something else in your mind, but that will be a fake smile and a wise will recognize that. You are sincere and honest in expression of your feelings. Then what will happen? You will find that particular circumstance and situation brings tremendous joy or bliss into you. You start practicing every day like that. Then you can increase the number of events from 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Then at different hours of the day. In the morning you are fresh, you can accept. But during midday, when the sun is at the peak, you have already exhausted half, your, half of your energies. Can you remain in the same state at that time? Many times I realize, because of the nature of my work, I have to work whenever the shipment comes in, the big heavy cartoons have to be lifted, moved from place one place to another, and pack them in such a way that it becomes convenient and easy to find where this particular item is in my showroom I must be able to find it it's a work all of a sudden somebody comes in the afternoon should I get angry with him that or entertain him in my natural way and I reach or something like that happens give me a few seconds within a few seconds or less than a minute I recuperate my things take a deep breath you are connected you recollect I understand I have heard that Winston Churchill had a room behind his chamber in the parliament chambers where before he has to enter into any important meeting or session he will go to that room it is a state of meditativeness you are trying to collect your threads within and then you begin normally we do when we go stand up in front of the microphone we try to clear our throats so that the voice comes out better. Instead of that, we should try to see that all of our diverse elements are in harmony with one another. When you do with one, with two, with three, then slowly and slowly it will become your way of life. Every time when you speak, you will speak in one tone. Just like a dog, every time he speaks, he speaks to one way. Maybe sometimes it may be a variation. We jeer. We make faces at situations when like that comes in. Under all circumstances and situations, your real self should manifest. Real self is unborn, unmanifest, formless. And then one day you realize that you are in constant communion with that which is. You open your eyes, you see God. Through his manifest creation, God is unmanifest. He is the subtractum of all that is manifest. Through his creation, through the variety that he has. Imagine what kind of creativity is that. Myriads of flowers, myriads of scenes, myriads of people, of different levels of intelligence, different level of creativity exist all around. 
does it not remind you of your beloved? When you go and see a, a jewelry shop or to a fabric clothes stores and you see a particular dress or jewelry, you remember your spouse because something like this, your wife, your spouse has it. Something like that, this particular dress, something like that, my spouse has it. Such ordinary things you remember but you do not remember that is essential for your life. This is the only way that you can be in communion with God moment to moment. There is no miracle that I have to perform. That is why in the 12th century Zen creation it says, Now that I go to the marketplace with a bottle of wine and woman, I extend no magic before me even trees get alive. I extend no magic. Before me, even trees get alive. That is a state. When you don't do anything, but light continues to manifest, you speak, the words happen. Words have a transforming effect. Whosoever listens to them. And this example, I do not have it only once. Many times I meet people in this function or that. Even outside Trinidad, I have heard People, the moment I speak, they know who they are listening to, who they are talking to. Another time I went to a store, the person who was talking to the, the store owner continued to talk and explaining the spirituality. I was standing on the side listening to him. Then he told me courteously, hello. I said, hello. It asked me something. So I said, have you known a person called Tao Shu Buddha? He said, yes, 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 I know. I have his books. I said, which one? Then he mentioned one of the book. Just out of curiosity, I said, what the book uh, looks like? Then he gave the exact resemblance. He said, that man is something else. The way he writes. So he started talking about Tao Shu Buddha. The girl who was standing, she started smiling. Then I asked him, have you ever met the person? He said, no. I said, suppose if somebody tells you that person is standing in front of you, he said, I will be, it will be greatest shock or the pleasure, the joy of my life. Then it happened that we introduced. Then he mentioned. So you imagine the joy. What you create can we create this kind of influence when we encounter the people? Always when we meet the people we are never to say anything good. What did I do? I never met that person. But whatever has manifested through me in the form of writing, in the form of messages, has transforming effect. And that is what is important. We, if we can create that, we are in constant communion with God. You have asked that I have an intense desire how to be one with God. This is the way. First, understand what Shankar said. Try to inculcate one by one quality. Somewhere you have to begin. The first step is the most important step. And once you begin the first step and there is sincerity, the things begin to fall in the right perspective. And in such a short space that you cannot imagine it. 